Los Alamos National Laboratory and Y12 have created a process to investigate the contents of high-value, hermetically sealed containers without destroying them or compromising their integrity. We have designed and developed and fielded uh, uh, very complex systems that, that involve sealed systems that have to last a very long time. As part of the surveillance or maintenance activity, we need to take samples of what's inside of those devices uh, to ensure things like corrosion aren't taking place. This was seen as a need to be able to go in and remotely sample those systems without actually having to tear it down and destroy it. The systems are very expensive. This is viewed as a way to obtain that data to understand the life and any chemistry that might be going on inside of that system. It is projected that this non-destructive interrogation process could save the National Nuclear Security Administration more than $10 million annually and that this technology could produce substantial cost savings in a number of industries that use and rely on hermetically sealed devices. This gives engineers and designers the future, uh, gives them the capability to use another process, something else on the tool belt that they can implement and uh, be able to use to reduce the weight of systems, reduce the cost of production, and increase the life of systems, and also in, in, in the long run, um, reduce the need for valves. Hermetically sealed devices are used extensively worldwide. These sealed environments protect against the invasion of oxygen, moisture, humidity, and other contaminants that can corrode electronics, degrade data quality, and lessen the lifetime of the system being protected. To ensure reliable performance, sealed enclosures require initial and periodic interrogation of interior conditions. Attached hermetic valves are commonly used for this process. They're complex with moving parts, they create volume and weight, and they can be costly. Valveless laser processing uses a single laser to access, sample, and reseal hermetically sealed containers. The materials that we selected at the time that we made the vessels had nothing to do with laser welding. In fact, laser welding, I don't believe, was even conceptualized at the time. Back then, they used a small tube to insert uh, tracer gas and the backfill gas into the containers themselves, into the systems themselves. The tubes were crimped, sealed, and so we were able to successfully drill through the tubes, but uh, when, when welded, uh, we, we saw cracks in the, in the welds. We have our material scientists take a look at it, and the, the process that we developed was essentially using an alloying technique, using the laser, and by doing so, we're changing the, the structure of the inherent material, the substrate material, from an austenite to a ferrite phase during um, the resolification of the laser weld. And we're able to do that by uh, alloying with um, a material with a higher chromium content that can later be laser welded crack free. The insertion tube for the container is made of 304L stainless steel. An ESD, electro spark deposition technique, is used to increase the chromium content of the 304L stainless material by alloying a higher chromium 312 stainless steel filler metal to the surface of the container. This technique changes the crystal structure in a region of the material so that no solidification cracking occurs when a seal weld is created. A manifold is installed and a protective shielding gas is introduced for the mix welding. The manifold has a window that is transparent to the laser wavelength and allows for a hermetically sealed, contamination-free environment. The laser is defocused for mixing the alloy material on the container. This prepares the laser alloyed substrate for reseal welding later in the process. The laser pulses throughout the mixing and moves the alloying material down the length of the crimp face. The shielding gas is then removed and the manifold is evacuated to a high vacuum. The laser is focused for drilling and a hole is drilled into the container through the alloy material. With the enclosure accessed, the contents can be safely removed, analyzed, and replaced if necessary. To seal the hole, the laser settings are optimized for welding, the laser defocused, and the weld created by pulsing the laser in the alloy material. We see this as an opportunity to increase the reliability of systems, to reduce the cost of systems and producing those systems, and also a way to safely and remotely interrogate potentially 
harmful or lethal contents. VLP works on a variety of materials of varying thicknesses and can be applied to containers that were not originally designed for ease of interrogation. In environmental remediation, the VLP process provides the ability to penetrate a vessel without applying drilling or clamping forces, remotely sampling the contents, making it safer for hazmat personnel to interrogate hazardous containers. The amount of certification and rigor required to implement this throughout the NNSA um, makes us believe this can be used in industry and be used in other devices such as implantable medical devices such as pacemakers. The VLP leak detection process identifies tracer gases, such as helium, inserted into pacemakers and other implantable medical devices to identify minute and often undetectable gross leaks, certifying the seal integrity to the highest standards. Valveless laser processing. Safe, remote, contamination-free, non-destructive sampling of hermetically sealed devices, producing more reliable and safer products. It's been remarkable. This was a, it was a cross-site, cross-functional, cross-disciplinary team and was a, a, an outstanding demonstration of when we put our mind to things, we can accomplish uh, tremendous tasks.